What's good guys? Welcome back to another video. If you're new, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified every time I post another video. And as you guys can see in the title, we're going to be talking about Calvinism. This is the first video on a series that I'm doing on the acronym TULIP. And T is the first letter in that acronym, which stands for total depravity. So before we even get to that, what is Calvinism? Let's just give a brief introduction to what it is. So Calvinism is a system of theological beliefs that arose from several reformers, but namely John Calvin and his followers. It is characterized by the acrostic or acronym TULIP. The T stands for, like I said, total depravity. The U stands for unconditional election. The L stands for limited atonement. The I stands for irresistible grace. The P stands for the perseverance of the saints. And like I said, this is the first video of a five part series that I'm going to be doing on TULIP on Calvinism. So before we start explaining what exactly the T in TULIP is, total depravity, I want to explain what it is not. So total depravity does not mean that people are as bad as they could possibly be. Hitler, for example, who was a paradigm of evil, probably loved his mom. He's not as evil as he could possibly be. He could have been more evil. He had the capacity to be more evil. So total depravity is not saying that people are as bad as they could possibly be. The term total depravity refers to the effect of sin and corruption on the whole person. So to keep the confusion minimum, a lot of Calvinists and reformers like to change the wording from total depravity to total inability. Because we are not teaching that humans are as wicked as they could possibly be. We're not teaching that humans are utterly depraved. And we're teaching that original sin affects the core being of everybody's nature or the whole person. So because of this, they are unable to choose God on their own. Apart from God sovereignly pouring out his grace to an individual, apart from God regenerating an individual, apart from God quickening the person by the spirit, they cannot choose God on their own because they do not want God. Yeah, a lot of people think that we are saying free will doesn't exist. We say that free will exists, not in the way a lot of evangelicals think of it, but we're saying that a creature usually does what he wants to do. And us as humans who have been affected by original sin do not want God. Therefore, we cannot choose God. Biblical support of this. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and watch this, and were by nature children of wrath. The verse says that we were by nature children of wrath. Our nature is corrupted. Our wills are in bondage. As Jesus said in John chapter 8, anyone who sins is a slave to sin. We are a slave to sin. Now, now the difference from slavery in America, that they hated the slavery, the African Americans, they were in pain. They hated it. The difference is that we love our slavery. So we don't want to leave the slavery because we love our sin. We love disobeying God. It's part of our very nature. So what total depravity is teaching is that we do not want God. Therefore, we cannot choose God apart from him regenerating us. Apart from him making us alive. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 7 through 8, Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. It says, we in our flesh are not able to subject ourselves to the law of God. Why? Because we are not able to do so in the flesh. Verse 8 says, and those who are in the flesh can not please God. So my question to my semi-Pelagians and my Arminian brothers is, is repentance and believing pleasing to God? Any Christian will say, yes, it is pleasing to God. But Paul is saying that us, apart from the working of the spirit, apart from God making us alive in our flesh, cannot please God. Therefore, we cannot repent. We cannot believe the gospel unless God quickens us. We are totally depraved. We are totally unable to do so. We are morally unable to choose God apart from him sovereignly pouring out his grace towards us and quickening us by his spirit and making us alive. Paul beautifully says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 18, None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. Paul says no one in their flesh seeks 
before God. Verse 12, all have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood in their paths and in their paths are ruin and misery. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So Paul tells us in this passage that no one in their flesh seeks for God. No one. Absolutely no one. So if you're a Christian, you may be asking me and you may be saying, well, Samuel, I'm a Christian. And I seek for God because Jesus commands me to in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So what I'm saying is that the only reason why you as a human being are seeking God is because God made you alive. If he did not make you alive, you will not be able to seek for God because you do not want God. Your nature and your whole being is hostile to God. The Bible says you are an enemy of God. You hate God. So you will not choose God. And because you will not choose God, you cannot choose God because creatures, human beings cannot do what they do not want to do. Cannot do what they do not want to do. So we have free will. But we do what we want to do. And we do not want God. Apart from Christ in our flesh as human beings, we are radically corrupted by sin. And because of that, we cannot choose God apart from him making us alive. David said in Psalms chapter 51 verse 5, In sin did my mother conceive me. In sin did my mother conceive me. So we are sinners not because we sin. But we sin because we are sinners. And humanity is totally depraved. Morally unable to choose God. And we see the effects of that in the world. The effects of original sin in the world. We see all the murder. All the evil things happening. It's because our nature is hostile to God. And God has to change our nature before we can choose him. And that is a brief, very brief explanation on what the T in Tulip is. Total depravity. The T in Calvinism, the T in Reformed theology. So yeah, I hope this helped you understand what the T in Tulip means. The first point in Reformed theology, the first point in Calvinism. And if there's anybody who is wondering what Calvinism is all about, what total depravity means, what is Tulip, I encourage you to share this video with them. Because like I said, I'm going to be doing a series on Tulip and I'm going to bring in a bunch of Calvinists who really know what they're talking about to explain the other letters alongside of me. So I encourage you to subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every time I post another video. See you guys later. I love you guys.